Let us continue our qualitative study of the wave equation and today we are going to look at what is called a causality principle and finite speed of propagation a property which is uh, uh, exclusive to hyperbolic equations we will look at them uh, through examples. This is uh, these are the two sides of uh, domain of dependence and domain of influence uh, of that concepts. So, causality principle finite speed of propagation. Causality means cause and effect. What are the reasons in the past that are responsible for the current state? What will be the future events for which the current state is responsible for or influences? These questions were answered in lecture 5.2 using the explicit formulae for solutions to the Cauchy problem. In this lecture, we attempt to answer the same questions without using the formulae for solutions. This kind of justifies the use of the word qualitative analysis in the title of this chapter uh, because we are not using any quantitative formula for the solutions. The analysis presented in this lecture is a typical illustration of an a priori analysis. A priori means done before. Conclusions can be drawn on solutions despite zero knowledge on their existence. We may not be even knowing whether solution exists or not, still we can conclude certain uh, things about the solution of course, if they exist that we do not know. So, in this discussion once again like in lecture 5.2, we are going to switch off the non-homogeneous term and we have already explained reasons for that in lecture 5.2. So, let us state in the form of a theorem. The hypothesis is let u from rd cross 0 infinity to r be a classical solution of the Cauchy problem for homogeneous wave equation that is this is the problem where phi and psi are given of course in the Cauchy problem and use a solution to this Cauchy problem. Conclusion for x naught t naught a point in the space time the value of u of x naught t naught depends only on the values of phi and psi in the closure of this open ball with center x naught and radius c t naught. Closure of this open ball is nothing but the closed ball with the same radius and center. Recall that b of x naught comma c t naught is the open ball with center at x naught in R d and having a radius of c t naught lying in R d. So, maybe we just briefly write what that is. So, those elements in R d whose distance the Euclidean distance from the point x is less than c t naught. This is the open ball and the closed unit ball we do not use, but then let me introduce a good notation is that those elements in R d such that y minus x is less than or equal to C T naught. Proof of this theorem, it follows immediately from the formulae for solution to the Cauchy problem, namely D'Alembert formula for d equal to 1, Poisson-Kirchhoff formula for d equal to 2 and 3. This was done in lecture 5.2. A direct proof is presented in this lecture without using the explicit formulae for solutions. Of course, we have to use something that may be some experience. Okay, we prove the theorem for d equal to 1 only. Why is that? Because the proof for d equal to 2 and 3 are similar, for, but for the obvious modification that needs to be done to the proof of d equal to 1. To avoid a lot of repetition, we do not do the proof for d equal to 2 comma 3, but mention one important inequality there and how that can be derived just the idea we will present. So, proof of causality principle for d equal to 1. Let x naught t naught be a point in r cross 0 infinity. Consider the characteristic triangle which is a triangle formed by the characteristics lines through x naught t naught on the x axis that is uh, this is the point x 0 t 0 
this point is x0 minus ct0, this is the point x0 plus ct0. This is called the characteristic triangle. What are these lines? This is x minus ct equal to x0 minus ct0 and this line is x plus ct equal to x0 plus ct0. Of course, this line is nothing but t equal to 0 x axis. So, fix a t such that t lies between 0 and t0 and draw the line t equal to t, we will get a trapezium. Recall point x0 t0 x0 minus ct0 x0 plus ct0. Draw this line t equal to t. So, we get a trapezium which is formed by the inter intersection of all these lines that is this part let us call it F. Okay. So, multiply the wave equation this is a trick the wave equation you have to multiply with u t you get this and reorganize the terms you get this if you expand this it will reduce to this. Now, this is in a good shape because here derivative u t t into u t is there u x x into u t is there whereas here some uh, t derivative of some quantity x derivative of some quantity is there it is like the divergence theorem we are in a good shape to apply divergence theorem therefore uh, this is a good arrangement. So, in fact as you see the divergence with x and t here of this quantity is 0 that is precisely this equation this equal to 0 means this. Now, integrate this equation on the trapezium region that we have indicated on the previous slide you get this. Now, we are ready to do integration by parts or apply Green's theorem and divergence will be converted to something else. So, what we get is that this divergence of course, it is equal to 0 is now convert to an integral on the boundary of f. f is the triangle uh, trapezium region boundary of f is actually the trapezium and that this becomes the integrand dot n d sigma n is the normal outward unit normal to the points of boundary of f. Of course, that varies from point to point on the boundary of f. So, the boundary of the trapezium consists of 4 lines actually the boundary of the trapezium region is the trapezium itself it consists of 4 lines they are the base of the trapezium denoted by b given by the equation t equal to 0 a part of the characteristic denoted by k1 given by the equation x plus ct equal to x0 plus ct0 upper part of the trapezium denoted by t t for top given by the equation t equal to t and a part of the characteristic denoted by k2. So, remember this is the point x0 t0 then we have drawn this. So, this is x minus x0 minus ct0 x0 plus ct0 then we took this part. So, this equation for this is t equal to t. So, this we are calling a b for base this is k1 t for top and k2. So, the integral is now on this these lines. So, we need to determine what is the normal to each of these sides. So, base of the trapezium outward unit normally 0 minus 1 top the unit outward normally 0 1. So, this is the base this is in the direction of negative t axis because this is x axis this is t axis positive t axis direction. So, this is in the negative direction so 0 minus 1 and here the top normal is in this direction outward unit normal it is in the direction of the positive t axis so 0 1. Then we have the sides of the trapezium which is k1 
one and k two at this point because k one itself is straight line, it's very easy. It's constant on the direction is the same on all the points on k one. Similarly, the outward unit normal is in this direction, and that is constant for all points on k two. Therefore, life is simpler. So this integral on the boundary now we can split into four parts which is B union K1 union T union K2. So on B uh, we have applied what is a normal similarly on K1, K2 and T we have used the formula for the normal that we written down on the previous slide we get this expression. So sum of these four terms is 0. Now we do a trick the integral on K1 can be expressed like this and this is an integral on k1 of some non negative quantity because of the presence of the square this is always greater than or equal to 0 and hence this integral is greater than or equal to 0 that is that is a property of d sigma non negative functions integral will be non negative. Similarly here remember this d sigma is nothing but the uh, measure on the boundary which is coming from uh, the domain trapezium. So, this has all the nice properties if you integrate a non negative function integral will be non negative. So, the integral over k1 and k2 both of them are non negative numbers. Okay, so, here I have sum of 4 quantities in that sum of 2 of them is non negative. So, what can I say about the sum of the other 2? It should be non positive that means that these 2 terms together is less than or equal to 0 which means I have the integral of this quantity on the top is less than or equal to integral of this quantity on the bottom. If you notice from this inequality if u is 0 on the bottom u and u t are 0 on the bottom then this is 0 then they will be 0 on the top also. This is the one which gives us uh, uniqueness of solutions as we are going to see on the next slides. So, this inequality is called domain of dependence inequality that means on the trapezium that on the top portion the integral is less than or equal to integral on the bottom portion. So, let u and v be solutions of the Cauchy problem define w by the difference u, u and v that is w equal to u minus v note that w solves the wave equation due to linearity of the wave equation of course and the Cauchy data will be 0 because both u and v are solutions to the same Cauchy problem. Therefore, both u and v will satisfy the same Cauchy data and hence the difference will be satisfying the 0 Cauchy data. Therefore, w of x 0 is 0 and w t of x 0 is 0 on the bottom. Now, we can apply the domain of dependence inequality and conclude uh, that we have this right hand side has become 0 right hand side was the same integral on, on b that is 0 because on b both w t and w x are 0 therefore this is what we have. But if you look at this already non negative quantity and we are saying that is less than or equal to 0. So, this is always greater than or equal to 0 therefore the only possibility is that integrand is 0 which means w t at what point x comma capital T and w x at the point x comma capital T is 0. Now, t is arbitrarily chosen capital T less than t naught. Therefore, we get w t of x t and w x of x t is 0 for every x t belonging to the characteristic triangle. This implies that w is a constant function, but w is already 0 on b. Therefore, it must be 0 everywhere. w is 0 everywhere is same as saying u is equal to v everywhere in the characteristic triangle. Therefore, the solution is the same u at x naught t naught will be same as v at x naught t naught. So, proved on the last slide w is a 0 function inside the characteristic triangle. In particular u of x naught equal to v of x naught t naught this finishes the proof of the theorem. This is another proof of uniqueness of solutions to the Cauchy problem. We already gave one proof of uniqueness earlier. Now, this is another proof of uniqueness of solutions. One more proof we are going to see using the energy method pretty much the actors in that energy method we have already seen in the domain of dependence 
inequality we will do that in the forthcoming lectures. Consequences of domain of dependence inequality, the above discussion shows that u of x naught t naught depends only on the values of the Cauchy data on the base of the characteristic triangle defined by x naught t naught namely the interval on the x axis x naught minus c t naught comma x naught plus c t naught. In other words, the Cauchy data phi psi at a spatial point x naught can influence the solution only in the region enclosed by the two characteristics starting from x naught comma 0 on the x axis which is given by x t in the space time domain such that x minus c t is less than or equal to x naught and x plus c t is greater than or equal to x naught. Let us look at the causality principle for d greater than or equal to 2 and characteristic cone. What is a characteristic cone? The characteristic cone also called light cone at a point x naught t naught in space time is defined as the set x t in r d cross 0 infinity such that norm x minus x naught equal to c t times mod t minus t naught where norm x minus x naught is a Euclidean distance in r d between x and x naught. The characteristic cone at the point x naught t naught together with its interior together with its interior this is only the surface this is with the interior we are considering now that is called solid light cone that is the solid light cone is this set. So, this is the picture this you can imagine R 2 or R 3 it is easy to imagine R 2 R 3 you cannot really imagine because the picture will be in 4 dimensions but imagine this is R 2 then this is what is called forward cone or future cone this is the backward cone or past cone this is vertex which is x 0 t 0. So, the definition of a characteristic cone is consistent with the definition of a characteristic hypersurface which we have introduced in lecture 3.7. Recall that the analytic characterization for a hypersurface given by phi of x t equal to 0 to be a characteristic surface is that grad phi dot a grad phi equal to 0 where a is the diagonal matrix minus c square minus c square minus c square d times and 1 for the wave equation in d space dimensions. So, this equation takes this form when we expand this gradient is in x t and what is a is the diagonal matrix described on the last slide. So, when we do that we get this expression it is phi t square minus c square into norm grad phi square equal to 0. So, this equation is nothing but phi t square minus c square mod grad phi square equal to 0 or you can put norm grad phi square if you want or phi t is equal to plus or minus c mod grad phi. Note that this function which is here is a solution to the last equation you can substitute and check. Now, what is phi of x t equal to 0 represent it is nothing but the characteristic cone through the point x naught t naught. So, why the characteristic cone is also called light cone? Characteristic cone is a union of all light rays that emanate from the point x naught t naught which travel at the speed c that is mod d x by d t equal to c this is the speed expression for the speed. In other words this set which we have here is nothing but union of these sets. What is this? This is a line right passing through the point uh, x naught uh, t naught because when t equal t naught in the direction v. So, take all this direction or the vectors with this length c and then this is precisely that. So, both the sets are same. 
that is why the characteristic cone is also called light cone, speed is c. Okay. T cross sections of light cone what they are? Each T cross section of the solid light cone will be a solid sphere. If you omit solid here, light cone will be sphere. Solid sphere means in, in, interior is included. That is for each fixed T, the intersection of light cone with hyperplane T equal to T is a D dimensional sphere lying in the hyperplane T equal to T. That is sphere lying in D dimensions, not D dimensional sphere. Sphere will be one dimension less. If you consider a solid sphere, yeah. So, let us not discuss that. It is a sphere lying in R D, that is what this sentence means. When the T sections are projected in the space R D, they are the spheres with center x naught and radius c times mod t minus t naught. Clearly as t goes to infinity, the spheres are expanding. So, what is the idea of the proof of causality principle in d greater than or equal to 2? As in the case of d equal to 1, the main idea is to multiply the wave equation with u t and then integrate it on some part of the solid light cone and then perform integration by parts. The region of integration was a trapezium shaped region for d equal to 1 which would now correspond to frustum of the cone. That is the reason why you, we use the, the notation f to denote the trapezium shaped region in d equal to 1, frustum of the cone. So, imagine uh, this is the kind of cone. Okay, So, you cut this, so you have this. So, this is the first of the cone. So, you have a bottom portion, you have a top portion and you have a uh, lateral portion. So, multiply the homogeneous wave equation with ut and rearrange exactly in one dimension we have done. So, we get this and then integrate on the first of the cone defined by t equal to 0, this is the bottom portion, t equal to t is the top portion. Now, proceeding exactly as in d equal to 1, the domain of dependence inequality we obtain that is exactly the same integral over t is less than integral over b. From here the uniqueness of solutions to Cauchy problem follows again. Okay. You take u and v to be solutions even for the non-homogeneous Cauchy problem subtract u minus v call it as w that will satisfy the homogeneous wave equation with the homogeneous uh, Cauchy data. Uh, which means that integral on b is 0 on bottom that function and the derivative with respect to t will be 0. Therefore, uh, we have this is 0 and this is true for every arbitrary t and therefore, in the first term uh, both of them coincide and hence even at the point uh, x naught t naught. Same proof. So, with these modifications the proof given for d equal to 1 it goes through for d equal to 2 comma 3 also. We will see one more proof of uniqueness using energy method later on. So, what are the consequences of domain of dependence inequality? The solid backward cone is called the past history of the vertex x naught t naught. So, if this is x naught t naught, the past cone we said is this, right. So, this is the past and this will be the future. of t naught. In other words, the Cauchy data at a spatial point x naught can influence the solution only in the future cone with the vertex at x comma 0, which is forward solid light cone emanating from x naught comma 0. The figure on the next slide depicts past and future cones located at a point x naught t naught. So, we have already seen this picture. So, finite speed of propagation, finite speed of propagation is a common feature for wave equation in all dimensions. We are going to study the speed of propagation of the Cauchy data, thus the homogeneous wave equation is studied. We illustrate finite speed of propagation using examples for d equal to 1 to 3. So, let us consider d equal to 1, let the initial data phi and psi be 0 outside this interval minus 3 comma minus 2. Therefore, u of 0 0 is 0, x equal to 0 t equal to 0. 
that is actually phi of 0. 0 is not in this interval therefore phi is 0. Let us now study the behavior of u of 0 t that means I am standing at x not equal to 0 I want to study what happens for t positive. For t positive such that minus ct is bigger than minus 2 that is t less than 2 by c u of 0 t will be 0. We will see this in a picture it will be very easy. So that is the information at t equal to 0 has not reached the point x not equal to 0 till this time t1 equal to 1 by c from which time the information will be received at this point. Thus it took a time of 2 by c to travel a distance of 2. Why the distance of 2? This interval is uh, at a distance of 2 from the point x not equal to 0 and thus the speed is c. u of 0 t remains 0 till t equal to 2. An illustration of this example is given on the next slide. So here we are standing at this point x not equal to 0. Right now at time t equal to 0 because this is t equal to 0. The information is only here in this interval minus 3 comma 2. Outside that phi and psi are 0 therefore u is 0 here. Let us consider this instant time instant 1. Then also if you see from our formulae this does not intersect the interval minus 3 2 therefore u is still 0 here. When you go to 2 that is when you pick up some information from here from the interval. It has reached this point 0 at time t equal to 2 because it is hitting this point. Possibly uh, phi is non-zero here who knows. But because the support of phi and psi is 0 it will be 0 only here phi of 0 phi of minus 2 psi of minus 2 will be 0. So uh, till time 2 you will not reach the moment you cross time 2, 2 plus something this time then definitely you are intersecting this piece. This side you get nothing because this side anyway phi and psi are 0. So you may pick up some information from here. That means information from this interval minus 3 comma minus 2 where the support of phi psi lies is reaching the point x not equal to 0 which is at a distance of 2, distance is 2, it takes time uh, 2 time 2 units. So this example is with c equal to 1. So speed is 1, distance is 2, so you take uh, 2 units of time to reach information. So after 2 the information starts coming. For example, if you are at 3 as you see here domain of dependence for u of 0 comma 3 contains minus 3 comma minus 2. Intersection non empty in fact in this example it contains. Now if you are at this point uh, 4 time 4 at this point you see that this is the interval definitely in this you have the support of phi and psi. So information has reached there. So in d equal to 2 comma 3 let us look at consider a ball b of 0 r center 0 origin at the origin and radius r it let it denote open ball of radius r with center at origin. Support the suppose that the Cauchy data is supported inside this ball. We know that u of x t depends on the values of the Cauchy data on this b this is a closed ball x t intersection b 0 r only this is non empty we have non zero solution otherwise it will be 0. So if the above intersection is empty u will be 0. In other words for each fixed t positive the support of the function x going to u of x t is contained in union over y in this ball of radius r center origin of the closed ball with center as y and radius ct which is nothing but this ball ball center 0 radius r plus ct. Thus for each fixed t the support of the solution is a compact set if the Cauchy data is compactly supported. We have observed this in d equal to 1 and illustrated with a picture also. In other words the support spreads with finite speed. 
let y be not in this ball of radius r with center 0, what will happen? Then not only u of y comma 0 is 0, this is the initial time right, phi and psi are concentrated inside B0 or outside that phi and psi are 0, y is a point which is outside that. Therefore, u of y0 is what? It is phi of y and y is not in this ball, therefore this is 0. But also u of yt will continue to be 0 for all times up to norm y minus norm y minus r by c. This is referred to as finite speed of propagation. So, what we have done in this lecture is we have derived the domain of dependence inequality for d equal to 1 for d equal to 3 we just gave the idea. So, using domain of dependence inequality we proved uniqueness of solutions to the Cauchy problem, the second proof of uniqueness and we revisited domains of dependence and influence with past future cause effect points of view. Thank you.